Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper here, Tony Hager over here. We're back with another episode of Global Wrestling News. Well, for the first time in nearly two decades, the United States has a junior Greco-Roman world champ. Kamal Bey put the United States on his back and beat junior Asian champion Makhmadov in the 74 kilo finale. The two traded step outs in the first, but then Bey hit a big four point throw to go up 5-1. Makhmadov responded with a reversal, but the American kept up the pressure, scoring five more on a late first period flurry to go up 11-6. Makhmadov came clawing back in the second, but a late counter throw on a veiled corner challenge gave Bay the 16-11 win and a junior world title. World champion Kamal Bay. Crazy match. Take us through that. Uh, shoot, I came into the match like I do any match. You know, ready to go. Good sweat going. Hearts pumping for it. But, you know, you wrestled a good, I wrestled a good competition that match. I really wrestled another me out there because it was just letting but lock up and go for both of us. And he had them into the dragon arms. You know, every time I thought I cleared the underhook, he was right back in. You know, it was times where I felt like I was on the ropes. But luckily, I'm like a cat, man. So, I, you know, I landed on my feet. How does it feel? You got the belt you were talking about. If, I don't know you. I don't have it yet. Okay, but <laughs> you cer- want it. Ceremo- How does that the feel? The ceremony ain't here, man. There's a belt right there. I want to take it. <laughs> uh, feel great. You know, this is something I've been training for. You know, it, it's almost like it came full circle from last year, you know, taking eighth place uh, here. And then... Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm back. Uh, taking eighth place and then uh, coming back and winning first. Uh, I'm just happy I got the people I do around me. Like, we're really going to enjoy this victory tonight. Not just for me, but for Greco-Roman wrestling as a whole in the country. Tony, did we learn anything about Kamal Bay this week that we didn't already know? Well, I've watched uh, Bay compete in big matches before on the Fargo stage. and He's just not hes not afraid to let it fly and right. try to make a big move to you know put up, put up some big points. What, it, what That's what's exciting about Greco-Roman wrestling. That's why people are so excited about him. But what I learned from him this week is he, ba- he, he, he feeds off his opponent's strength. So when they're pushing him and, and they're scoring points on him, he wants to get bigger throws. He wants to score more points. And, and you know, this dude is a guy that, I mean, if you push him, he's going to push back twice as hard, and that's why he's a world champ. Well, joining Bay in the junior finals, surprise stars, Hevian Severado. The Missouri native was unable to score against his Iranian opponent and gave up six points on two takedowns and a pair of pushouts. Here's U.S. silver medalist, Hevian Severado. Junior World Greco silver medalist, CJ Severado, coming off the mat after a silver medal match, or gold medal match. What did you learn about yourself from uh, the beginning of the day to the end? Um, you know, I, I, as good as I am, I still have lots to learn. I'm still fresh with the, the old Greco style. And um, the more I do it, the more I think um, I know I'll get better. And uh, uh, I think it's nice to know that I still have lots of room to improve. And um, I think Coach Rob will take care of that. So uh, uh, I'm interested to see how I'll do next year. Though he finished in second, Severado became the first U.S. Greco wrestler in 17 years to reach the Junior World Finals. Well, Mars is a cadet world champ, so this, this isn't a, not a bad finish, right? I mean, he, he was not expected to be on this. I mean, the biggest takeaway, I think, for for him would be, you know, that he has the capability of wrestle Greco. You know, he's a he's what they call, the Greco people call a leg grabber. So he's a he's more of a freestyler. So I think uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see where he takes from this. I think this is going to give him confidence maybe to continue Greco, but he knows he's a better freestyler. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes. But a silver medal definitely wasn't expected. So kudos to him. I know the guys at Five Point Move are all excited about what's going on in Greco right now. 2016 Junior World Bronze Medalist Taylor Lamont placed fifth in Finland dropping a hard-fought 2-1 decision to his Russian opponent, Magomedov, in the third-place bout. I thought um, I thought Lamont perhaps was going to get a medal. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, everyone pegged him. You know, this is a guy that's been a five-time world team member. I, I picked, you know, I picked him to come home with a medal. He was a bronze medalist last year, like you said. You know, th- real disappointing finish, but it was disappointing you know, the officials, I think, really screwed him out of really? this deal. I mean, he was down 2-1 late. He's going for a big move, and his opponent, you know, was grabbing a hold of his singlet. You know, um, Richard Emerald tweeted out a picture, and you can clearly see it. it. I mean, he was holding on to his singlet. Right. So, you know, Emerald got a good little shot of that. And it's just, it's obvious that that was an issue. I think the officials kind of got caught up because it was really late. 
with a Lamont charging in there. So really, un- you know, that that's not that's a no no in Greco, and unfortunately, he, it, this didn't get called. It's a no no, no matter what. Giangelo Hancock was one to watch in Finland, but ended up placing a disappointing seventh at 97 kilos. So Hancock is on the senior world team, but failed to medal at the juniors. Tony, what are your thoughts? You know, first off, Hancock got, I mean, just like Lamont, I think he got absolutely screwed in the quarterfinals. I know Americans, I feel like we're always complaining when our guys lose, but, you know, is If we have video evidence. <laughs> yeah, it is 3-2 late in the second period. He's up, and the turkey guy just straight up tripped him in Greco. You can't you can't touch the legs, you can't kick Talking the legs, Herbe, trip him, yeah. you can't block the leg. Um, clearly, you can see that he touched the legs, the leg foul. I mean, you can see it on the video. I mean, this was... Uh, this is definitely a huge miss. All right, so why wasn't it reviewed if it's that clear? Well, it, it actually was reviewed. It was reviewed, and the officials still got it wrong. It gave Turkey the takedown. So, Herbe lost, ended up losing the next match, and that took him out of the tournament. So, that's why you see the, you know, that low finish from him. So, complete BS. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the U.S. was unable to reach the medal round on day two. Returning junior world team member Randon Miranda dropped a controversial 6-5 decision in the opening round at 55. Another controversial decision. <laughs> yeah, well, it was... Not as bad as the other ones, but, you know, Miranda had a brutal draw going into this. I think they knew that, you know, his chances of meddling were going to be pretty tough. I mean, uh, so I think when you look at this, at the end of the day, you know, the draws were everything for him. Um, And hopefully, you know, he learns from this and can, uh, you know, focus one match at a time and then look for the future. Dominic Damas, Y. Colling, and Colton Schultz were also eliminated in the first round of competition, and the U.S. finished fourth behind Turkey, Russia, and Iran. We've got a lot more from the Junior World Championships. We'll take you through day two. That's after the break. You're watching GWN. Thanks to our friends at Fairway Food. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Benavene, Benavene Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, We purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, We've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow-blue LED lighting, and you should too. Ryan Nelson took the boys' freestyle momentum after winning the U.S. first junior world championship since 1984. Nelson ran through her bracket going tech, pin, shutout to advance to the finals at 63. There she would face Bulgarian Yaniva. Nelson scored the first points on a leg attack and held a two-point lead at the break. Maya continued to press the action in the second. She had a re-shot near the edge of the mat and then put the Bulgarian on her back to seal the 6-0 win and grabbed her first world championship. Maya Nelson, world champion. Congratulations. How are you feeling? I 
am elated. <laughs> I am so happy right now. And like first and foremost, like all the glory goes to God. And it, without him, without my faith, I would not be here. So. The day starts with tears, it ends with tears. Yeah. I'm a big baby. It's okay. You can be a big baby as long as you work hard, am I right? You mentioned earlier um, how nervous you were, how the emotions were kind of getting to you before. How were you before this match? Still nervous. Still nervous. I, I get nervous, and I think it's more excitement than nervousness now that I'm like starting to just get my mojo into I mean I've been wrestling for a while but I mean I've always had that feeling and I always related it with nervousness I always related it with something negative and I think on this match I was just like that's not nervousness that is that is excitement and I can do this and I'm going to do this and I'm not stepping off that mat until I am a world champion <laughs> now you've done it what do you think I want more. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the preview, Tony. You really whiffed on this one. No love for Nelson. Uh, I mean, there's We had 10 matches to pick from, and, I mean, Maya Nelson, definitely. She came out of nowhere. She doesn't have near the experience, I think, as the other. Well, she's been on Takedown Radio well, already. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's got some. She's a star. She has some experience. She's a rising star. Uh, she's a junior talent that we have in the in the in the country. She was a lone champion star for United States. So right now she went from she wasn't a nobody. She went from basically kind of a low tier status of rising, and now she's really kind of become a star. What about her. your girl Asia Ray? Ray faced Canada's Pan Am champ Alexia Seal in the first match of the evening session and hit a go behind takedown to lead 2-0 at the break. Ray scored on a Seal shot attempt, then second hitting a takedown and a beautiful arm drag to go up six. Seconds later, the Canadian ran through a double leg, but it was not enough as Ray countered with a four-point throw and took the bout 10-2. Junior World Bronze medalist Asia Ray. How does that sound? You just said I did it on my first try. Yeah, I know. I was really excited. I was scared when I first came in, but now I feel like I really deserve to be here, and I'm excited. Now, I'm ready for next year. I'm trying to win next year. <laughs> What will this do for you going ahead, going forward? It's going to give me a lot of confidence. Now I'm fixing to go to college, and I was worried that I wouldn't be, you know, at the same level as the college girls. But competing in this tournament and actually placing just gave me a lot of confidence that I'll be able to keep up with those college girls. What was going through your head before you wrestled that match? Um, I was thinking that she knows I'm a double. Um, her coaches were probably telling her to, you know, tie me up so I can't get the double on there. And I was excited to show them that that's not all I have. Um, I didn't score not one double. I scored from other positions, so I was excited. You had a great day. All of your wins were pretty dominant. Can you just talk about how you, what you thought of your performance overall? I think I did really great, and I can't just, like, you know, put it on myself. It was my coaches. They gave me the confidence. When I came here, like I said, I didn't have much confidence, but they continued to talk to me and told me that I'm worth it, that I deserve to be here. And having them talk to me all, every day and tell me that I'm good enough and practice with me and show me the things that I need to do better and the things that I already do good but perfect, it made me you know, really confident and it helped me really a lot. Well, your girl Asia Ray is kind of a sleeper on this team. Yeah, she was another. She was another girl that didn't really put in my preview. Picked a three other girls that didn't perform. So this is a a, a girl that now three, three and out for you. Sir. Yeah, I I whiffed on the on the women. That's for sure. All right, Washington's Cameron Gurren wrapped up her first junior world championship with a fifth place finish at 51. Gracie Figueroa and Alex Glad both finished 1-1, giving the U.S. just one medal through four weights. Michaela Campbell, Rona Heaton, and Rachel Waters also represented the U.S. on Friday, but. Were were unable to reach the medal rounds. Heaton and Waters each finished 1-1, while Campbell was eliminated in the opening round at 48. With a pair of medals and 29 points, the U.S. placed fifth behind Ukraine, China, Russia, and the team champions from Japan. So, Tony, what are your biggest takeaways from the women's performance? Uh, I, I think uh, it was disappointing. Um, so the senior level has to perform at Paris for, you know, the there's lots of, tons of lot of momentum in women's wrestling, so I feel like if the women can kind of the the senior women can pick up the sails here, I think that's going to be something that we you know we just look back on as a as a learning experience. So um, 
we really need to focus on, you know, what are we doing at the junior level in men's freestyle? How do we transfer that over to the women's? How about we just wrestle better? Aaron Vandiver going to Wyoming Seminary to start a year-round program for women's freestyle wrestling. That's good news. What she's learned at USA Wrestling can only help that program thrive and something we absolutely need for our development. I think that's what changes the culture for women's wrestling. And one other thing, when a bearded Tom Brands is encouraging through written word and on social media, encouraging the NCAA to recognize women's wrestling, man, things have changed. Time has changed. All right, check out all the archive matches in the live stream from Tempe or Finland at trackwrestling.com. We'll be right back. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to Adidas Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years, time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around. And the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out, pureandcleansports.com. All right, Penn State sophomore Nick Seriano has requested a transfer to Rutgers University, taking him back to his home state of New Jersey. The undefeated four-time state champ has been granted a release, which means he can transfer outside of the Big Ten without losing a year of eligibility. Seriano will file a waiver request with the Big Ten, but will have to sit out the entire 2018 season if he stays in conference without a full release. This has just been a, a full whirlwind. You know, first all the talk was Penn State wasn't going to release him, or he wasn't even going to leave Penn State. Now it comes out that he has been released. So something tells me things have been moving behind the scenes. I mean, we just had Scott Goodell on Takedown Radio, and he seemed like it was complicated. Like Penn State was putting up an obstacle for them. To, to get him. They have the Big Ten. I mean, there's no getting around well, that. Let's, but let's be clear. He never said that never on said the show because he even specifically said, please, let's not talk about what I can't talk about. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm implying some things, but <laughs> he just was on and it, it seemed like things were complicated. Yeah. And it hadn't, he, I mean, he didn't bring up, well, the Big Ten is, is stopping us, so. There's this huge issue of, you know, releasing kids, not releasing. And, yeah. and as you as a coach... You personally, when you if you have somebody that decides, you know, they want to, you know, go home, maybe be with family, or they want to be at a different university, I think that's the best uh, spot for them. How do you 
react to those situations as a coach? Well, I can tell you this. I learned about, I believe it was six, seven years ago when, when I, I first didn't release the kid. And then I had the athletic director tell me, you know, that's, that's probably not the best bet. and doesn't look great going forward. And since that day forward, anybody who's ever wanted to leave our program, we've granted them the release because there's so many variables you don't know about. It's not just wrestling. There's, there's so many other things that go into it. Why these student athletes want to go back home or whether they just want to go to another school. But, uh, so, so for me, if, if they don't want to be a part of the program, there's no hard feelings. You know, there's always questions why. And you're always wondering why. What could we have done better? Why are they leaving? Maybe they just want to wrestle at a certain spot and don't feel like they're going to make it in your lineup. So whatever the case might be, it's, it's, they don't want to be in the program. Uh, it's best to just allow them to go, allow them to leave and allow them to wrestle. So that's kind of the way we felt about it, and that's changed a lot. Uh, for me, because there was a time seven years ago where I was in a certain situation, and uh, from that day, I still don't feel good about it. So uh, there is a lot going on right now, and I could just, again, speaking for our program, sure. if these guys don't want to be a part of it, you just you release them, you cut ties, you move on. All right, we don't have all the details, obviously. Nobody really does except Nick Seriano, his family, and perhaps a coaching staff at both Penn State and Rutgers. But think about what Coach Goodell said. Why keep a kid that doesn't want to be there? It's bad for the kid, and it's bad for the program. 100%. I don't know why he's wanting to leave Penn State. I think every situation is different, though, as a coach. Why you release, why you don't. Penn State doesn't really need Seriano to be the title contender, the huge favorite next year. So my guess is he wanted to go up a weight class. They've got Roman Bravo Young. They've got Gavin Teasdale that are, are commits, high commits, top five in the country. So I'm guessing that if they saw Soriano going up to 33, that he, they thought that they could maybe lose out on those two recruits. And Roman Bravo Young is at what? What weight? Well, he, he's looking to go 33. 30, okay, so it is for sure. Iowa head coach Tom Brands has joined a growing list of those wanting to see women's wrestling in the NCAA, as we mentioned just moments ago. In his letter, Brands said it's long overdue for women to share in the opportunities afforded by this great sport. Brands concluded his letter by stating to empower women both athletically and academically, we call upon the NCAA to grant women's emerging sports status for the upcoming season. First, Tony, what is emerging sport status? Well, emerging sport is a women's sport recognized by the NCAA that is intended to help schools provide more athletics opportunities for women and more sport sponsorship options you know, for these institutions. It also helps the sport achieve NCAA status. So this is really kind of the next step. He's not saying, hey, we got to have women's wrestling right now. This is a stepping stone to hopefully get to that point. Can you imagine if we've been doing this all along? I mean, right now, what's the ultimate goal? Are there enough women to make this a viable option for the NCAA? Well, I, that has got to be a question lots of people are asking. I think when people, you know, bowling, rowing, water polo, et cetera, these, these schools were talking about, you know, the NCAA was thinking about putting this in as an emerging sports status. They have the exact same questions. But when, when young women see that there is a possible opportunity to go to the next level, to get a, a college sponsorship, that's huge for them. Yep. You know, they don't have so many opportunities. They can go to play softball or these other sports where it's already established. So young women thinking about doing it, now if it's there, they're going to go off for wrestling. Well, the University of Minnesota has a verbal commitment from St. Paris Graham senior Ryan Thomas. He placed third in state as a freshman and sophomore and was a preseason Nationals runner-up just last fall. Thomas projects out at 74 and joins top rank Gable Stevenson and Fargo champ Patrick McKee in the Gopher lineup. Now, Thomas is a top 100 wrestler. He hasn't been able to crack through and, and, and pick up that state title, so I feel like he is a little under the radar. I mean, I, there's a huge upside for this recruit, and obviously that's the reason why they're they're, they're going after him. The uh, future teammate, Stevenson, could be a four-timer. Do they redshirt him and wait for Kyle Snyder to graduate or just go for it? Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, that's a loaded question. Yeah, I, I mean, no matter what, I, I'd say you, you redshirt him. You know, they have some rebuilding to do anyways. I mean, it, it's got to be a if you don't redshirt a guy, I feel like you, you're you going for a title. So if Minnesota is not ready for a title at that point, you redshirt him no matter what. Gable Stevenson is going to want to take an Olympic redshirt in 2020. He's going to make a run at the senior level, I guarantee, at that point. So 
He's going to have plenty of time on the Minnesota map. Tyler Graff is on the move. Virginia Tech head coach Tony Roby has announced the hiring of that four-time All-American as director of performance and wrestling. An NCAA runner-up in 2014, if you recall, Graff placed third at the Olympic trials in 2012 and again in 2016. In addition to his role on Roby's staff, Graff will continue to train at the Southeast Regional Training Center. This is a great hire. Yeah, Graff is another one of those guys that just, uh, he's been around, but he just hasn't been able to break through, he hasn't been able to get over the hump on the world level. He's been in tons of close matches, but um, it's for me, this is exciting to see that he's still wanting to train. He's not just throwing in the towel and, and deciding to coach. I mean, this, this is a, we need as much depth as we possibly can at that senior world level. So keep Graf in the system. All right, other names to keep an eye out for, Jared Freyer, Frank Molinero, and Tyler Graff, those are three guys, three national team members, all working on this loaded staff. Well, you know, listen, Dresser left an amazing program. So this was a top five program. So these guys really, it wasn't hard to get this staff put to place, I think, for Roby. Because, you know, you're going to a program that's really turnkey. So it's not like these guys are, you know, bottom feeding for recruits. They already have a top program. Really not easy, but a lot easier than going to Iowa State and pick out the pieces. And Tony Roby as a head coach is a top guy in my book. All right, we're out of time, Tony. For all of us at Takedown Studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week for another edition of Global Wrestling News.